Hey guys, today I'm going to walk through the specific project I did um, as kind of a personal study for how to automate animation by setting an IK rig on a track. It's a pretty simple process, but it could save tons of time in, in animating things that are cyclical, like walking, running, anything like that. And so I wanted to walk through and, and show you how I kind of finagled this character and set him up to be able to be animated. So what I mean by I automated this character's animation is I set the IK system on these tracks here. So if I press play, you can see that these controls for the IK system are gonna follow these tracks wherever they get turned or, or moved. And that, after it's set up, it saves a ton of time when you're trying to, for instance, have this little character walk down the street or something because you don't have to animate each key pose. You can just set them on this track and press play and move the entire model instead of figuring out where each finger is gonna hit the ground at each point. So just before I get into the nitty gritty, what I basically did in this model is I modeled the hand uh, and the bone sticking out of it into how I wanted it to be. And then I rigged it just like you'd rig a hand. And then what I did is I created an IK system, an inverse kinematic system for each of the fingers. After using the IK system is I simplified it even more. So with walking and, and running and stuff, Typically, your feet follow a pretty simple, basic path, which you can see here is, is kind of like this arched curve path here. There's some variation, but your feet basically follow that path every time you walk. And so what I did for this finger is I created a path for each of the fingers, and then I used a constraint to make the control of each of these IK systems follow that path indefinitely. And then I pushed it even further I set these paths up with this control here. And so every time that control moves, each of these curves moves independently. So if I were to come out of pose mode, if I were to spin this around, you can see the fingers kind of spin accordingly. But if I spin them and let the animation keep going, it almost looks like a crab walking to the side. And so by doing that, I made it so I only require like four or five keyframes for an entire character animation. And I can use that again to simplify my process and pump out character animations a lot faster with this particular model system. You see I have this hand. I'm just going to show you what I did on this hand for reference. So what I did first is I brought in a human meta rig. And you can see right off the bat there's a lot of stuff we don't need. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm just going to select everything that I don't need. I'm even going to delete this one. But I'm going to keep this forearm because I want it to control the wrist movement. Okay. And so once I have that... I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees and I'm just going to try and place this about where these fingers are because that will kind of be the permanent way to, to get these where you want them. It does take a little bit of finagling to be honest just because it's in 3D space but you'll get there and just take some time and really just place them where these bones would be in real life. That's honestly the best way to do it. So those look pretty good. We can go out of transparent mode. Probably just want these to not show up outside of the mesh. It's a pretty good way to get a sense for if they're in the right place. That should come out of the middle there. So we have all of those placed pretty much in the right place. We can make some edits down the road if we need to. Now what I'm gonna do, staying in edit mode, I'm going to get out of my cylinder and what I want to do now is I just I want controls for each of these fingers and I can't use any of the bones that are already connected to the hand because that's going to mess with the mesh once we get to that point. So I have my rig kind of arranged how I want it to. Now what I did is I added controls to each of these fingers so that I could put them each on their own individual track. So in order to do that, I just went to, I selected my rig, went to edit mode and click shift A and that brings out a bone. I just moved it about to where I wanted it in this space. So now we have the bones and the controls for the hands how we want. 
And so the, for the rest of this, I'm just gonna show you how it works on one finger because it's not a, a fully fledged tutorial. So if I go over to pose mode, I can select the control bone and then the bone that I want it to be the tip of the IK system for. And then if I click shift I, it will bring up this little box that says add IK and then you just click to active bone. So you can see the colors have changed. And if we were to just move this around, you can see it creates an IK system on that bone, but it's also affecting all of these other bones, which we don't want. So all I'm gonna do to fix that is go over to the highlighted bone and under bone constraints, you have all of these options. And the thing you wanna change is the chain length. So you can see my finger is only three bones long. So if I increase that to three, then when I move it, it doesn't affect all of my other bones. And you can you can modify this how you want. You might even bring it up to four. Um, that way it will affect more of the hand. But for, for mine, it was like controlling it too much, which I didn't like. So I just kept it at, at three for the chain length. Okay, now once that's created, the last bit's pretty simple. All you have to do is create the track that this finger is gonna follow. So if you go back to object mode and add a curve, I'm gonna add a circle curve and then just arrange it how I want. Now you can see I'm gonna put the automation constraint on this right now just so you can see how it works. So if I were to go over here and click our control, go over to pose mode. If we go over to bone constraint and go to follow path, we can select this circle as the path that it's following. I'm not totally sure why whenever you identify the path, the whole thing blows up. I think it's because location data is being stored. I typically just kind of readjust where the bone is. So you can see the entire IK system is being controlled by the circle. And we don't want that we want it to be a little bit more realistic. So let's reset this, put it in kind of a believable area. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shrink this circle down. Another thing is when this hand's gonna be walking, it's gonna be walking on the floor. So it's the finger's not gonna be going all the way under the floor. So I'm gonna make this flat on the bottom. And then I can just grab these and change the handle type to free just affect those how I need to. So now when I affect the armature, it's a lot more realistic. I'm gonna just readjust that bone to make it go where it should. Now the only problem now is this curve is probably too far out for this hand because this finger is reaching too much. Um, and so I'm going to the offset here so that we can see how moving the path affects this. Then I'm gonna to go to object mode. I'm just gonna scooch this down until this point. So now if we go back to the pose mode and we affect that armature, you see as we change the offset, the entire finger walks. So now what we can do is we can just put a couple of keyframes in and space them about 20 keyframes apart. So 100 is complete revolution on the offset, but it's going backwards. So I'm just gonna put it at negative 100. So now we have one little walk. So from here, we're not gonna put any more keyframes to keep it walking. We're gonna go over to the graph editor and go over to modifiers and go to cycles. So if we go down to where our keyframes were, we can see that adding that cycles makes this animation continually go. And then if we go back to object mode, no matter what we do with this path, we can have it go like this. And now that pinky is kind of walking sideways. What we can also do is if we pull in just an empty, an empty sphere, we can have this rotation be tied to the rotation of the sphere with drivers. So that means when you turn this, that path will change automatically. And the benefit of that is when you add all of these, all of these paths to all of your fingers, you can attach them all to this um, empty sphere. You can change the direction of your model just by rotating that control.
adding it to a mesh is pretty simple. It's This is not a rigging tutorial per se, but like all you have to do is click the mesh and then click the rig and then click control P and go to armature deform with automatic weights. And that way the, the rig we made will automatically affect the path we created. The cool thing about this is I did this with a mesh, but you don't have to. You can just parent mechanical objects to the, the rig, or you could uh, parent individual bones, like mesh bones, to the rig, and you could have a skeleton hand walking across, or it doesn't have to be a hand, obviously, but you can do a lot of different things with it. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a really cool workflow I found to um, build systems to speed up animation in general. And it was really cool to learn about, and I hope you guys felt that way too. Um, would love it if you guys liked and subscribed. Helps out a lot. Allows me to do more of these videos. Um, but thanks. Comment any questions you have, and blender on. Thanks. Bye.